Uh, Jeremy, um, just working with uh, the new pitching lab and, and seeing what that's been able to do for you guys, you know, what have those analytics helped you guys at, during the offseason? So a good amount of it's, I mean, one, as soon as we get here, we got to get a good baseline on our guys, make sure they understand what they're looking at and when they're looking at it, just so we can start to get an idea of what the next plans are. I'm uh, personally not someone that likes to just go in and immediately make changes. I like to get the facts first and see what they're good at and understand um, where their mindset is and, and what they do well before we start tweaking things and adjusting. Obviously, building confidence um, is, is first and foremost. Um, these guys understanding what they do well and how to apply it, as well as our catchers understanding what these guys do well. Um, so we can just easily bridge that gap so everybody's pulling on the same rope all the time. Um, how do you feel about the pitching staff as a whole and what you've seen from them so far? I'm enjoying it. I mean, I'm fired up. I can feel the energy that they have. Um, all the guys are excited. They're coming by the office, looking at video. We're getting them a lot of feedback. Um, I think they're getting a heavy dose of, of analytics and data. Um, but at the same time, we're, we're presenting it in a way that's digestible for everybody. Um, some guys are a little bit further along and we can take them a step or two further and some guys are very elementary in the process. So um, I think any step forward is a step forward. So the more we're going in that direction, the better. Um, I, I know these guys are excited. I'm excited. We're making it fun. Um, it's never a, a good, good environment if you're going out there and you're dragging and, and you're dreading what you're doing next. These guys are excited to go out there and learn. They're excited to start competing this weekend. And, and I'm sure even more excited to start competing against people that aren't wearing maroon and gold. Um, working with minor league arms to now working with some, some younger guys in their development, um, how have you kind of adapted your approach a little bit to, to get them up to speed? Do you think? I think the, the, the main way to kind of answer that and, and the main way to attack it as a coach is to understand where everybody's starting from. Um, obviously, we have some guys that are a little more polished. We have some guys that are raw. So that's the, and that takes me back to what I kind of said earlier, right? There's no one blanket approach that can touch every one of these guys the way that they need to be, to be handled and, and, and for their growth as an individual. So I think you attack every little, every single person a different way because they're all unique in their own ways. They all have things that they do very well. They all have things that, that they need work on and, and they're all different. So to just put one blanket approach on everybody just doesn't hit. Um, home the way that, that we want to, and, and it's not the way that we want to run this. What do you think can go into de developing that individual approach? Is it kind of a sit-down, or is it more It's sit-down, so it's a lot of coaching with questions. It's it's finding out their why, understanding what they're feeling, and then mat and then matching that with what we're actually getting from these pitches. Um, obviously, I can look at a TrackMan dashboard and, and pick it apart in a half second, but if they have something in their brain that they're trying to do and accomplish, um, it may be right. So, so we have to kind of bridge those two and find out exactly where their motivation is, where their conviction is in a pitch, how they see themselves pitching. I mean, obviously we're in a generation where all these guys have, have grown up on phones and a lot of them have been their own pitching coaches in a way that, that I'm, and, and we're not accustomed to seeing. It's a lot of imitation from, from what they see from major leaguers, which can be great. Um, if, if your stuff aligns with that major leaguer, if you're, if your favorite pitcher is Tyler Glass now, but you're an East-West guy, it's it's a different approach. So it's handling these little situations bit by bit and piece by piece, and and just trying to make sure that this process is is, is easy and and smooth for everybody. I mean, obviously, um, it's an important growth time for all these guys. Like from 17 to 23 is when you can make the most steps forward and make the most gains. So we just need to make sure when we when we're delivering something, it's it's the right thing. Beautiful question. So, so the way that we handle it here and, and the way that we've attacked it right from the get-go, and, and this is for our entire staff as well, is I've already asked all the dumb questions in the world. I've stared at those screens and, and nodded my head yes, and I've said trigger words like spin rate and all that nonsense. I didn't know what the hell it meant. So, so I had to ask a bunch of questions and, and learn as I went, and that's what we created here is a culture where ask the dumb questions. Like you may think that they're dumb, but there's eight other people that have the same damn question. If we don't put it out in there in the open, nobody learns. So um, we give them what we can. I, I, I ask a question about it. What are you seeing here? What does that mean to you? And then they answer and I go, yeah, it's, it's kind of right, but it's also means this. Um, so it's a constant growth 
uh, avenue that really, really honestly is, is beneficial for both the player, our, our staff, our catchers. All these guys are starting to understand um, exactly what what these guys' arsenals are and, and how we make it just as good as we possibly can and optimize every ounce of it so that it's easy and smooth once we jump that white line and it's man versus man. So, How has this process been for you um, enjoying the challenge of adapting to working with a lot younger age and you know a different kind of uh, player in baseball? Um, it's been, honestly, I, I've loved it. And, and I, even when I was a player, I was always asking questions with the the thought of myself as a coach. So I wanted to learn as much as I could about the game. I, I would go watch Roy Holiday. I would watch DeGrom. I would watch all these guys pitch, and I would constantly be just analyzing and asking questions so that I could be better at this job right here. Um, with these younger guys, I think it's even more fun because they're hungry. They haven't been told how great they are as much. Um, there's, there's a lot of ways that we can get better. Um, th these guys want the world and they're open and, and listening. And, and that's the difference between pro ball and here is every one of these kids is eager and willing and wanting the same thing. You know, obviously we want to win baseball games, um, but these guys want to have careers as well. Um, so they're going to listen. Um, so we just need to make sure they're listening to the right thing in pro ball. It's a little bit different. Like some of these guys think they're already good enough and you have to try to, it's that, it's that feel part of knowing when to deliver a message. Um, here you could almost give them too much. Um, so it's, uh, it's that beautiful balance of, in that dance of when is the right time to give it, what's too much, what's not enough, what needs to be mechanical, what needs to be mental, all of these things come into play. So good question. What's the most important areas that you're focusing on in fall ball to get these, especially younger arms, ready to be main contributors in the spring? Confidence. Confidence and, in, in, you know, believe it or not, a little bit of cockiness. Um, the confidence to throw the ball in the heart of the zone, um, to challenge hitters and not shy away from contact. Um, that's one of been, been one of the more impressive things. Obviously, we have a team that can rake. Okay, So we have to face these guys a lot, which can shatter confidence or it can build confidence. Um, we've had a couple guys give up homers, and, and that's going to happen in this park. Who cares? Um, it can't happen after two walks. So um, having the confidence to give up a homer and go right back in there and throw a ball right down the middle. Um, you know, teaching these guys that that see how many swings and misses you can get right down the heart. Because guess what? You're probably going to hit your spot one to two out of ten. So just make sure your misses are competitive as well. So um, in, a, in a short answer, confidence. That's all we're trying to build. Confidence, understanding of, of each of each of their arsenals and stuff, and then just move on from there. You talked about that balance earlier, but how does that balance play into – the baseball analytics you can get caught up in the spin rates like you talked about and simply going out there and just competing what do you echo in that department just ask that question one more time as far as balancing baseball yeah. analytics and the competitive nature of the game yeah i think that's that that's that feel aspect of it right like i was born and raised in the old school mentality all of my coaches that that, that kind of groomed me were were dave rigetti's you know, and, and that type of people with the old school mentality, that thing still plays. And honestly, that plays more when you jump across that white line. Um, the analytical side, the data side, the using the lab, understanding how your body moves, understanding how your pitch moves, how to optimize them, that stuff is done in practice. So blending those two different things and understanding what these guys are doing is, is the beautiful aspect of it. But at the end of the day, there's no denying that it's a, it's, it's, nine versus nine and usually one versus one, especially for my side. So um, I think that, that these guys understanding what their stuff does in practice and how to fine tune it out there, take what they're learning in the bullpen into catch play because that's our batting practice as pitchers. That's where we can get better. Understanding that my the way my body moves in that lab, this is how I get better in the weight room and we adjust it accordingly. Um, I think that's all stuff that just lets these guys feel freedom um, I, I know that I can see sometimes with especially young guys, they go out there and they feel like they have to be perfect. I want them to be themselves first and foremost. I can practice and, and we can spend as much time as we can with rules permitting out here, but as soon as you go out there, I'm not with you. So you have to do that on your own and you have to be you. 
Um, we can tweak things. I always bring up analogies when I coach. So it's, 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 I'm just a buffer. I'm a bumper trying to keep you as much as you as I possibly can while tweaking little things along the way. What are your thoughts on question, guys? Uh, what are your thoughts on Ben Jacobs and his potential? As a player? <laughs> well, uh, it's an easy one to love. I'll tell you that. Um, I, I know a lot of people in the game and, and they have a lot of uh, very, very promising things uh, to say and beautiful things to say about Ben. Um, again, this, that's a tough time and, it, and it's good that I've been through it. It's good that Willie's been through it and, and all of us have been through these, these roller coasters of what you should do versus I still have a year's work to do. You know, where that's going to take me, how do I deal with the little bit of failure that's inevitable. This is a game of failure and the, the ones that don't let it affect them the most is, or, tend to be the ones that rise to the top. So um, it's, it, I'm happy to be a part of that journey with him. Obviously, I won't make a single pitch. This is him. Um, keep him confident. Keep him himself. Understand that when you get knocked down, get back up fast. That's what these guys want to see. Your stuff already plays with the elite of the elite. Um, now they want to see you fail and see how you bounce back up. It's, it's what, what, what happens after that ball gets hit over the fence. How do you react? That changes a guy from a, from a number four in the big leagues to a number two or a number one. So 